don't be afraid to be wrong. This one I want to bring up um, on a couple of reasons. The, the first one is I've experienced it in the workplace a few times. And where I've been trying to help somebody and they will refuse to accept they're wrong. Um, you know, like, for example, say that somebody files a report with me and, and I look at the report and say, well, these figures are wrong. But I'm actually going to tell them how to get that calculation done automatically and remove it from being a pain in the backside for them to try and do manually because I can uh, teach them how to do it in Excel in about five minutes. So it just does it itself. But instead, they'll try and argue with you. You say, look, no, it's wrong. No, it's no, it's not. It's not. You, 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 you must be doing it wrong yourself. It's the method. You, the way I do it is actually calculated. It's not me counting it, which is what you've done. You've manually done it, and the figures are wrong. But they will argue with it to the point you just go, okay, fine, go and do your own thing. Because then you have to put that into your um, into your notes, and then you do something about it later. In consulting, what I do, it often re results in people being fired. Um, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> a lot of people get fired because they don't do as they're told. Um, taking photographs is a prime example. People take photographs and they're told to do it in a certain sequence because I can have a thousand photographs in one folder that are they're not numbered and they're not identified. What you have is they need to be in the sequence so I know which one's which. And they'll say, well, I think this method is better. And it's like, that's not how we do this because you're one of 30 people. You do it the same as everyone else. They'll go, blah do it my own way. Then come Friday they get their final pay and they're gone. I've sacked at least 40, 50 people doing that. And it's not me being awkward, it's the fact is if somebody's awkward on that, they're awkward on other stuff. And one of the fundamental things I recognize about people that have gone on over the years that I've worked with, and there's something I do myself, is I question what was wrong. In the sense if if I do something wrong and someone says that is wrong, I'll say, well why is it wrong? And sometimes you'll get a blank look because they're not expecting you to ask. But if they actually explain it and show you, you know for next time. But often I pick up new skills that way. And then the other side of that being is when somebody says something's wrong and I know it's right anyway, um, I've asked them why it's wrong. And then they will explain and then you actually correct where they've got it wrong. Um, what's an example of that? Um, this is this is one of my old managers. He came up with this pearl of wisdom. Um, this is for working out heating on a, a boiler system. Now, bear in mind, he's supposed to be getting paid more than me, but he has a boiler. Now, boilers have fixed temperatures. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, um, but he was asking, could we switch another boiler on to up the temperature? And the answer is no. And we explained it with buckets. It says if you've got two buckets of water and they're both 30 degrees and you pour them into one big, big bucket, what's the temperature? It's not 60, it's 30, because the temperature hasn't increased, <laughs> but he thought it did. Now this is the guy who's in charge of engineering, and you're saying no, that's not how this works. I said think about it, two buckets, temperature's 30, temperature's 30. Put them in the big bucket, it's probably likely going to be 27 because of the heat loss, but let's keep it simple. It's 30 degrees. No, 30 plus 30 is 60. No. <laughs> but I got the same conversation with somebody today on something else, and the thing is, he actually asked me the right question. Is this correct? Because he says he's got um, one gigabyte on his internet. Uh, when he moves to Spain, things are advertised at um, 30 megabyte, 100 megabyte, 500 mega, you know, 300 meg, whatever. And I said, yes, because you're looking at two different things. Your one gigabyte is on mobile data. Mobile data is the amount. That's your amount of data you're allowed to use in a month. Internet connections are talking about your speed per second. So it's, un it's uncapped, it's unlimited. Um, they're completely different things, even though they use the same terminology of the quantity type, but they're actually used in very different ways. One is per month, and the other one is the actual physical speed. Okay, get it, fine, away you go. That's a prime example, something, just ask a question, there you go. If you're wrong on something, there is nothing wrong with admitting you're wrong, because that's the only way to correct it. And a lot of people don't do this anymore, and I do find, that's why when somebody sent me that video relating to that, that woman who went off to Morocco, 
And it's quite funny seeing some of the comments where people say, do not say Marco is Africa, do not do Because obviously she's been to one piece of Africa at the same time now saying the whole of Africa. And it's like, because when she said Africa, I thought, what's she talking about? She only went to Morocco. Because <laughs> obviously you just drive, you can drive to Morocco from Spain. You can just go down south and cross over on a ferry and be there. And she was acting like she was off to somewhere, off to the Sahara or something. And it's like, but then when she had everything go wrong, she had no realms of responsibility. And when you get those people, they're very difficult to deal with because they will keep doing things wrong rather than go, oh, you know what, I had a bit of an idiot moment there. Um, I shouldn't have done this, that was my fault, whatever. I, I mean, it, we all do stupid things sometimes. I mean, that, that's part of life. The difference is how we deal with it. You know, like I said, I mean, my mechanic, the, well, sorry, the garage at the moment, sorting the car out. I shouldn't be going through this with a new car. But lesson learned. Next time, I'm buying a car in the UK and I'm driving it here. I don't give a damn what they say. At the end of the day, these guys are absolute crooks in this area. Um, lesson learned. My fault. My fault. I'm in the Wild West. Same as buying a new car in the Philippines. Same hassle. Same crap. Same mentality. But it comes from recognizing your own mistakes, your own faults. But ultimately, um, if I had more space, I'll be honest with you, I'd be working on the car myself. Me and Mr. YouTube and Google. Because I can fix most things myself anyway, which is the annoying thing. Here, you're not allowed to work on the road. <laughs> so I can't fix it. Ah. But anyway, we live and learn, we live and learn. But I just wanted to bring that up because I do think it's important that people recognize that doing things for yourself is important recognizing that you can be wrong. Same way as trying new things, because a lot of people don't try new things because they're worried about what other people think and whatever. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because even when you do something and people say, yeah, you're right, and you, it's wrong, they're talking behind your back anyway. So why don't you just get it all out in the open and say, oh, I did that wrong. How would you do that? And get them in there. Get them to fix it. Show them. Somebody can do it better, show me. Show me. That's leadership. That's real leadership. This is the funny thing. I was watching something with SOE um, the other day, and they had this guy like do this, do this, do this. and it, the raft fell apart and stuff. And they're like, oh, he had good leadership. He got them, but he didn't delegate. They got a guy there that was an engineer. The engineer should have been the guy building the raft. What he should have done, you start building the raft. You go and check around the the lake to see if there's anything else in the lake we can, around the lake we can use. Da da da. That's it. Best leadership is delegating. It's not dictating. Dictating never works because you're not getting the best out of people. The best thing you do is praise what people are good at out of them. It's like me with locksmithing. Locksmithing is what I'm good at. Wall tiling, I'm terrible at it. And they know I'm terrible at it. But at the same time, I still get people saying, well, somebody's got to do it. No one else is as good as you are. But I'm going, get somebody else in. You know, this is what I used to get when I used to do the maintenance stuff. They go, oh yeah, but nobody else can do tiling. And I'm like, yes, but I can replace a couple of tiles, but tiling a room is a completely different ball game. I, I can do it, but I don't like doing it. I'm slow at doing it, and I'm never happy with the, the finished standard. But it's like, but nobody else can do it. But at that point, I've already pushed my way through on that to say, I don't want to do it. At the same time, they've got no one else is available. But... Uh, <laughs> at least I've tried. I've made them aware. I'm not going to be happy with it. If I'm not happy with it, you ain't going to be happy with it. And the client's probably not going to be happy with it. But be warned. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.